Welcome back to another video of linear algebra. Um, today we're going to talk about system of equations with matrices. Um, I'm pretty sure or I'm making the assumption that most of you have heard of systems of equations and more like dealt with it during algebra 1 and your algebra 2 uh, math lectures. And so by now you should have a well understanding on how to solve systems of equations um, more particularly systems of linear equations um, using different methods such as like Kramer's rule or elimination but here we're going to introduce a another way to solve systems of linear equations that involve matrices so with systems of linear equations you can rewrite a equation in the form of ax equals b where a is a matrix of constants uh, x is a column vector of unknowns and b is a, another column vector of constants and so if you were given any uh, linear or systems of linear equations you can ultimately boil it down with just three matrix as you can see we have our matrix a here our x column vector and our b column vector and so this form is a much more simpler way to write a system of equations and if you can see here, if you were to multiply um, matrix A by X, you will get um, this form here. And so if we do like a small two by two matrix, we get like C1, C2, C3, C4, all multiplied by as the most common constants X, Y we will get um, C1 plus C, oh, C1x plus C2y and then C3x plus C4y. And if you look at the dimensions, this is a 2 by 2 and this is a 2 by 1 so ultimately you should be able to get a two by one um matrix which we do here since we have our first two rows and then the single column so when it comes with systems of linear equations um there are three possibilities uh, when solving them and they could either be no solutions one solution or infinitely many solutions um, additionally if the column vector in the right side which is um, b is equal to zero then we could say that the system of linear equations is homogeneous uh, on the other hand if it's not equal to zero then it's mm -hmm. non-homogeneous and so the way we're going to solve these uh linear equations using matrices we use a process of what is known as gaussian elimination uh the most common way of saying this is um row reduction so gaussian elimination is like a little fancy or whatnot but it's most commonly known as row reduction <clears throat> and so the thing with row reduction there are three things that you can only do um, with the system of linear equation. The first one being um, is that you're able to interchange the position of two equations. And so if we had some equation ax plus by is equal to c and then dx plus ey is equal to f, you can swap these two and have them be dx plus ey is equal to f and then at the bottom will be ax plus by is equal to c so in hindsight it looks kind of pointless but um it will be very useful 
uh, later on when we do the examples. So another thing that you can do with um, row reduction is multiply one equation by non by some non-zero constant. And so using this set of um, equations that we have here, we can technically multiply the, the bottom part, uh, multiply all this by some constant, um, say g. And lastly, we can add um, to one of the equations as a multiple to another equation. And that's pretty much very similar to what you've been doing when you do the elimination process with um, regular systems of, or, or with systems of linear equations back in your algebra class, uh, classes, um, which is basically using this like same equation. If we were to multiply this by negative g, and then add it to um, the equation at the top, we would, um, well, for the most part, we will find a variable that will cancel out. So in this case, we can hypothetically say that the dx and the agx will cancel out and you're just left with ey plus gby is equal to f plus gc. And then from there, because you have it in terms of one variable, uh, you can find your y and then um, use that to solve for your x. <clears throat> so as you can see, uh, Gaussian elimination is very similar to the elimination technique that you learned in your algebra classes. Um, the only difference is you're doing it with matrices. And so the end goal when it comes with row reduction is that we want to get it into a row reduce echelon form. And what that basically means is in the most simplest term possible, it pretty much means as simple as possible. So um, I will elaborate more um, when we do the examples. And so lastly, before we do the examples, we'll be discussing about the kernel of a matrix. So the kernel is basically a set of vectors y and the dimensions of um, n for which uh, the matrix A multiplied by that vector is equal to zero. And that is known as the kernel of matrix A. And another way that people write it is just cur of A. And then lastly, before we move on, there are like three facts that we should know about the solutions of linear systems. And so the first one being that if X1 and X2 are solutions to the system, then X1 minus X2 is in the kernel of A. Additionally, if X0 is a specific solution for the system of equations of a, um, ax equals b, then any other solution of ax equals b is of the form x0 plus y, where y this time is in the kernel of a. And then lastly, if y1, y2, all the way to yp is a set of vectors in the kernel of a with the properties that any other element in y um, or any other element y is in the kernel of A can be expressed as y is equal to s1 y1 plus s2 y2 all the way to sp uh, yp. And so for some choice of constants of s1 to all the way to p, they don't necessarily have to be the same, but um, the, the solution or any solution of the equation ax equal to b can be written as x is equal to x0 plus um and so for some constant s1 s2 sp they don't necessarily have to be the same uh constant then any other solution in the equation ax is equal to b can be written as x is equal to x naught plus s1 y1 plus s2 y2 plus all the way to sp yp where x0 is the fixed particular solution of ax is equal to b. And so this portion here, this third fact, is just um, elaborating on the first one. So 
where you could write a uh, any solution in the form of x naught plus y. So in this case right here, we have our x naught, which is x naught, and then let me rewrite it. So the s one y one plus s two y two all the way to s p y p. Yeah, this portion here. That's just y. So that this all of this is just this right here and so you can clearly see that uh, the third fact is pretty much elaborating on the second one so technically there's only two things to know about the solutions of linear systems but we will uh, talk about this and you'll be able to see this in the examples that we will have in the blackboard. And so, yeah, that pretty much concludes the lecture for matrix and systems of linear equations. And so on our next video, we will do a couple examples uh, talking about this. And so, yeah, I will see you guys in the Blackboard.